Hey everybody, welcome to Geek Storm, number 60 something or rather, 63 I've just been informed by producer man. We are live in the heart of beautiful downtown Kokomo in mid-October, where we are surrounded by the beautiful smells of pepper whistle as they waft through the air and embrace us in their buttery goodness. Your buttery goodness. Buttery goodness. <laughs> Delectable buttery baked goodness. treats for the whole family are available. All the time. Not all the time. Succulent cookies. Not not 11 p.m. on a Sunday Cookies night. can't be succulent, so, um, I really, you know, if you're going to... Today we're uh, joined by uh, a man on the street commentator, Austin Meisnest, who will be uh, informing us on many things that are going on in the local area that are very important. But, meanwhile, Mr. Uh, producer Man, from now on, for the next, uh, until December, maybe January, we will need to start off with a little box here that shows Mike Harrison and weight loss. Every week there will be an update no, for won't. our viewers. No, there won't. Mr. Harrison has decided to go about losing some weight because he is a fatty fat fatterson. It's true. Mick Fatterson. It's true. He is morbidly <laughs> obese. Mike, if you wouldn't mind uh, taking yeah. a second to stand up to show the crowd. I won't. Maybe a 360. But here's the deal. <laughs> so we can get the picture that we'll uh, need for like our graphic loser. every week that we're going to encourage him. I need you to go to our Facebook page and I need likes, and for every like we get, Mike has determined to lose a pound. That is also not true. So if we get 500 likes, Mike will attempt to lose 500 pounds, which he needs to do. I'm afraid that this is going to be the before and this is going to be the after. So that's why I'm, tr I'm trying to <laughs> do something now in order to make sure that that doesn't Fatty happen. McFatterson, right. sexy McSexy. <laughs> Fat Gilligan's doing all right. I have, uh, you're, did that did that strike a nerve? Because that was a funny, but also, I mean, you had the you had the right outfit on and everything. And no, I thought it was funny. Okay. That's why I'm, I'm going to keep going. That's why you, that's why you stole it. It was good. It. Yeah, you stole it. My if line. you insult me and mm -hmm. I use it as ammunition to better things, I'm, I'm yeah, you're right. I'm going to do that every time. You know, a little Barry so, Bonds in the corner. Right so. now, <laughs> Mike is currently at 250 pounds. That is also not true. We are going to try <laughs> to get Mike down to a reasonable amount of weight. We're also going to follow his Rocky-like routine at least once, where he'll be wearing a gray gym suit, Not true. running through the streets of Kokomo, and going to White's Meat Market and beating up on a pork chop. Also not true. Mike. <laughs> This was an interesting week. <laughs> it was. There were some great things happening in this week in television. Oh, wow. Okay. So, Mike. Yeah. You uh, being Mikey TV. I am. What was the uh, what's ratings looking like? What's been canceled? What's been greenlit? What's getting the go? What are we thinking? N nothing's been canceled yet. Uh, they are looking at the ratings. The, th the things that continue to be, you know, horrible on the CW, are. They're stars, you know what I mean? Horrible compared to an NBC show or something like that. So you're still gonna have Supernatural. You're still gonna have. Um, Mike, you know, ignorant slut! That's a horrible thing. You fat ignorant slut! To say, oh. and also not descriptive in any way. A&E has already uh, gone on and uh, cut all, almost every single live action reality show that they had, except for Kyle uh, Men. Okay. And but that's got nothing to do with that's got nothing to do with their real television. Their, their fall ratings. That's got nothing to do with oh, their fall ratings. Okay, that, that's true. That was their plan. But that they, was a lot of cuts. That is. They're getting rid of. They're getting rid of all that stuff. Like, they kept Comic Book Men and they kept The Talking Dead. Right. That's it. That's it. Every Everything else is scripted TV. I mean, and they've renewed like two shows, right. like the Game of Arms. Like, guy got a phone call. Yeah. Hey, guess what? Your crappy show just got Season renewed. Season two. Whoa! Yeah! Hey, oh, whoa, whoa. Hey, 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 hey! Wait a minute. Wait. No, yeah. no. But canceled. Hey, just, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Click. It was canceled. It was like they called up with a prank call. It's like that is true. Guess what? And they did it. I mean, there was like two or three shows that did that. Right. I want to say Gene Simmons had another show about his football team. Yes, uh, Fast so, and Loud or Fourth. Something unloud. Some, yeah. yeah it's Something unloud. So it's an they, arena um, football team that they own. They canceled. Yeah. Everything with uh, Joan Rivers turns out canceled <laughs> through no fault. Or at road. least re uh, recast. Re, re, re with some new talent. Repackaged. So all right. Woo. What else you got there? Um, and Walking Dead. I heard Season six confirmed. Yeah, confirmed. Walking Dead before the first episode even aired. Right. 
they confirmed that they were gonna do it, which we all think is a no-brainer, but I don't think they've ever done it. Last year, they waited till they were four or five episodes in. Mm -hmm. Every year they've waited at least to the first episode, if not a couple in. This is the first time they said, you know what? We're making so much money. Yeah. They're just like, <laughs> did you see the, what happened to Sunday Night Football? Huh. Carol told it to look at the flowers. It just, just look at the flowers, Lizzie. <laughs> Just look at the flowers. Just, just look at the flowers. <laughs> they did finally, they beat Sunday Night Football. Sunday Night Football got put in the grave by, by their, zombies. Their highest rated episode ever. So, and pretty amazing. You know what wasn't on that episode? Uh, what? My commercial that I paid for. Oh no, you mean on Comcast that we're supposed to uh, do the commercial for Kokomo they, they, Con? Uh, they, they didn't air it, and our producer filmed it. I know. Now they have apologized, it was taken care of, they admitted that it was a mistake on their part, right. not me, I didn't screw anything up, Mike right. didn't screw anything but up. But it does you no good now. You know, they've done what they can. They can't, they don't have a time machine. Uh, Mike has filmed another commercial, which we can't wait to show everybody. Hey, let's show it right now. Hey, Sean Hilton at Comics Cubed here. I believe that you shouldn't have to get your head bashed in with a baseball bat and your throat cut to get a great deal. So stop in at Comics Cubed and don't get killed. I don't want to make money, folks. I just love to sell toys. <laughs> okay, we can come back. That was pretty funny. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's really. I'd like to see it. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be good. You're gonna, you're gonna right. chuckle. So, right. I liked it. And uh, this time it's with the uh, Kokomo toys. I get. We actually are splitting the commercial because they're so expensive. So you get 15 right. seconds of, of Tubby McTubberson here, mm -hmm. and then 15 seconds of really cool toys. Gotcha. So I'm pretty pretty excited. I think you guys are going to dig it. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave some likes and comments again for every like. <laughs> um, so yeah, Flash has got a couple uh, another episode or so out, and seems to be doing really well. Mm -hmm. Arrow seems to be doing well. Air, um, Flash set new ratings. Again, not that on CW that's that hard to do, I would imagine, but right. they beat the Arrow ratings, so it, uh, it found some love. And then Gotham has got a full season. Yeah, uh, so they got more, yeah, more, more episodes ordered. Six more episodes ordered? Yeah, I think that, that completed them out from a half season <clears> to, <throat> you know, 15 to whatever they needed. Right. 16, something So that's like a big that. deal. So, so, yeah, but now the writers are like, okay, we, you know, this guy makes you feel a little more comfortable. Not that it can't always get canned somewhere, but... We know now that a DVD set, DVD set should be coming out with you know 22 episodes right, on it, so right. that should be pretty awesome. Yeah. And what's going on in the show that I don't watch? You, uh, what were the ratings like for American Horror just returned? Very high for FX. And again, you can't compare FX and CW to NBC. Uh, they're going to keep their best shows on regardless of what they look like compared to you know the best show on NBC. But uh, really good, uh, really strong in the ratings and. Uh, that first episode, <clears throat> even even the title sequence for this for this particular American Horror Story is one of those shows. They every season they do a new, completely new story. Your hat's messed up. And um, so this this year it's about. Uh, I really think you're 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 blind in the. <clears throat> this year it's about 50s freak show circus type of thing, and uh, same mostly the same cast of characters. Um, Playing different parts, obviously, but the, just the title sequence alone in in this season is super disturbing, and the first uh, episode was incredibly uncomfortable <laughs> to now, watch. <laughs> my wife is in the audience today. She, she refuses is, to be uh, that, on that, uh, up there. That lovely young lady there. there. Now oh, she oh, has gone you. over to a friend's house to watch it because mm -hmm. I, I don't watch it. Uh -huh, I'm not, right. I don't have a problem with right. it. You know, I I try to limit how much television I watch because. Right. There's so much on, and I've never get anything else done. Sure. I was told by save good for... friends that watched her watch it, and another good friend, uh. that they watched it like four-year-olds <laughs> with, 
with comfy blankies like up to here over their eyes on occasion. Were there not scenes where Chris, Christina Hilton, my best friend, uh, were there not scenes where you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that's on TV right now? Okay, exactly. There, I was told there is some clown yes. that has that has upped the ranking of creepy clowns. Oh yeah, and, and you can even take that out of the show. Okay, there's still other just other stuff going on in this show. Oh. I don't even know what the hand signals are. I'll tell you later because I can't say it on camera. What <laughs> exactly what it is. There's that scene that he's re that he's referring wow. to. Wow, there's a scene that's so bad that we can't even talk about it. This isn't Spock, uh, and then there's also the film that they showed to the to the young lady on the on the episode that was okay. just I could not believe it was. This is FX, it's pay cable, but it's still network television. It wasn't HBO. It was more disturbing than anything I've seen on HBO. Speaking of violence on television. <clears throat> Back to you know the big biggest show of the week, I would say, The Walking Dead's opening sequence. Right. Holy freaking cow! Now again, my wife, as we're watching, it's like, I can't believe that's I can't believe I'm watching this on right. television right. right now. So yeah, what did uh, what do we think of the opening of The Walking Dead, Austin? I thought it was just shocking. I thought it's the most gruesome thing we've seen, and we've seen a lot from that show, and just. I don't want to spoil anything, but oh my god! You just you can spoil here. Oh, but you spoil? Yeah, but I'll tell you this: that's one of those shows where violence is the norm, and we become desensitized. Okay, I need another good zombie kill because all I remember is this last sure. one when the guy pulled his face off. That was really cool, or chewed his face well, off. Well, zombie chewing, chewing the face off. That sets it up a little bit. Now next week, what are you gonna do next week to to make? Now, me go, oh my gosh! We all know, and I imagine most of the <clears throat> hardcore geeks know. But if we have anybody that's just tuning in watching, the very first guy that gets killed. As he's looking at the camera, and they, yes. they go, they pan back to him once or twice. There's a special cameo mm -hmm. from the gentleman who's now playing the penguin, Robin Lord Taylor, in Gotham. Mm -hmm. So, that, what? What's his name again? Robin Lord Taylor. Uh, if he wasn't gonna be an actor, he was gonna be a serial killer. <laughs> so he had two <laughs> options That's in true. life. He decided to go with the better one, and be, and, and portray one on Gotham, where he yeah. is. Constantly stealing the show. But he, he was in the previous episode he of, was. of Walking Dead, so it wasn't just they threw him in there. I mean, the thing I've, I have heard is that basically they, they got him on a plane, right. flew him out, put him in the costume, told him nothing. Yeah. Said, look at the camera as if you're in great, yeah. you know... Where are my lines? Oh, you don't have any lines. You don't worry about <laughs> Can it. You, is your back okay? Can you bend over just for about, about 10 scared. to 15 minutes? Okay, great. That's all and you thank you. Here's check. Right. And have a beautiful day. Right. Good luck on that other show. Right. Yeah. So, Which seems to be working out for him because he's stealing that as well. He really is. Now... Right? Oh, I don't want to go over to Gotham just yet. Okay. Is it even allowed now for, for Carol and Daryl to hook up? Or if, if that were to happen, uh -huh. if those two were to have sex, uh -huh. would every zombie in the world just die from complete <laughs> assery right now? Here's, here's, here's was my thought during that, during that episode, is you had Carol, who has become a modern <laughs> ass, versus Tasha Yar, who was, who was uh, admittedly much older, but the <laughs> of that particular show on, on Star Trek Next Generation. And I think I can say that. And um, <clears throat> well, I'm supposed to say it. you're supposed to correct me, but it's okay. <clears throat> I think that's a term now. I don't think it's a. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm really backpedaling. All right, <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> April today and producing to be beep beep. It could be my last episode. I'm not really sure. But uh, I was like, I'm gonna take Carol in that fight every single time. Even young Tashiar, even young Tashiar with a phaser on on the Enterprise. With Worf standing back there, I'm still taking Carol on, on, in, the, in that fight because she has just evolved into, like, if Daryl went away, you'd still have Carol, you know? Yeah. And she's, she's she, tough. She has evolved from being a victim of spousal abuse, mm -hmm. mousy, quiet, I didn't think she was going to make it through the first half right. of season one, right. to being a, a force of destruction and just, she's scary. Yeah. Carol should scare you. So, yeah. Now, with reading the comic, I know you're big into the comic as well. Sure. Do you think the TV show, the characters, I know there's different characterization. Do you think they're too top heavy with the bad guy, you know, Because right. it, it seems like, because in the book, you always had one. Sure. One or two. Right. Something would happen, they bring in another and, one and or spoiler two. for the book, Carol gets whacked and never does anything interesting. Right. Carol, I believe, if I remember correctly, does Prison, suicide right? by zombie. Yes, she does. She just walks up to a zombie who's on a chain right. that they're experimenting on a little bit and lets it kill her. Right. So and it just, it just she feels was like always on the show. Weak. There's just everyone is that badass role. It's well, hard it for everybody to show how tough they are. But uh, and and when you're saying that, brings me back to while watching the episode, the scene where they were making their final run. The entire group was making their run away through away from and, and through a terminus, and everybody got their their beat on camera as to taking a taking a zombie out. I'm like. That guy's really tough. 
They, that guy's tough. They're, they are all seasoned warriors at this point. Yeah. Right. Because if you're not a seasoned warrior at this point, you're not alive. Yeah. There's nobody just hanging on, except for Beth, whatever. We don't know what's going on with her, but if she's in that group, I imagine she takes one out too. But they they all have become, <clears throat> they, are, they have become just as tough as, let's say, a, uh, a Daryl was in the very beginning. You know what I, mean? I agree. They're now survivors. Yeah. They're, not, they're no longer victims. These guys are you know, getting over. And then the the bookend scenes where you see the people of Terminus, right. you know, before they became what they were and after they became what they were, mm -hmm. everybody is saying in that last, there's like two scenes. Mm -hmm. The last scene we see is the then again, and we see a guy in shadows that I believe is a character from the comics. The outline looks almost like he was sculpted out mm -hmm. of the comics, mm -hmm. and that's Negan. Mm -hmm. What did you, uh, any thought there? I've not read that far in the comics. I'm up to about 60 or so, so I haven't gotten into that character yet. The governor mm -hmm. was an evil, cruel Hitler, almost like character, right. but he had a bit of suave, he, he knew how to handle a crowd. You know, he could, yes. The Negan character is that character that we had to create to be more monstrous than the other guy uh -huh. with no charisma uh -huh. and all swagger. I see. Nothing but cursing and swearing mm -hmm. and... Every other word is the F word. Yeah. I, they've actually <laughs> said they don't know how they're going to do that character yet. At least yeah, yeah. the comic version of that right. character. Because they can't, they can't on right. air get him to say what he needs to say. I like those, those flashback scenes where you got to humanize uh, the termites or termites or whatever they're calling them nowadays uh, a little bit. But I did not see the jump from... Okay, we had this utopia, guys came in and took it from us, they threw us in a cart, somehow we took it back from them, and then we decided to eat people. I didn't, I didn't see that, I didn't see that jump. That escalation. Yeah. Because, and, and I agree, and they're saying, you know, and who knows if they're giving us false information or not, but on the first Talking Dead, I've been, I didn't see it, but mm -hmm. I've, I've heard, they said, we're not going to do flashbacks all season long. Right. That is not our theme right. this year, you're not gonna see that. And I almost thought we would see it with Terminus, as we saw like mini, almost like webisode kind of things built into the show, right. to see them lead up to the revolt. Right. And then of course at the end we see the guy who got revolted against come back as the big and then craziness ensues. Well it sounds like we're not going back to Terminus. No, it, so, well I mean there's not much left to so go back no, to. So there's no reason to continue that through so, the season. So they probably just told whatever story they're ready to tell and then they're, then they're ready to move on. Uh, I did see the Talking Dead and the one point that Scott Gimple mm -hmm. made was that the um, the big fight, everything happening this episode in Terminus was a payoff for all the teas all season long last season because, you know, all the signs and everybody, all the hope and everything uh, building up that they wanted, they wanted to not draw it out this season. They wanted to just get it over with and give everybody a big payoff and then, and then move get on. Get into another storyline. Yeah. Speaking, they, of, speaking of teas at the very end of the episode. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. And I missed it the first time because, you know, the Walking Dead credits come on and it's next, they show some scenes from next week and then I, I flipped it off. But I missed it, and uh, I can't. Uh, Kale uh, told me about it, so I went back and watched it. It was really cool because I love that actor. Um, yeah, he's amazing. Lenny. He was great in Jericho. Lenny, his name is Lenny something. Well, now his name is Morgan. Lenny. Lenny. Yeah. We'll go with Morgan. Yeah. And that was cool. That was really well done. So you get an after credit. Right. So now I'm not saying they're going to do this every time. It might have just been because it was a premiere episode. Right. But now they have trained us. We're going to sit through right. all those credits. Right. Yeah. Set the the DVR for an extra three minutes just to make sure that another English actor cover everything. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, he's uh he was in Jericho and he was also the bad guy in like Bionic Woman or something. Oh, he, played, yeah? he played a bad guy in something like that. Uh -huh. I can't remember which other show it was, but it was another doomed to death sci-fi show so yeah there's some other stuff going on tv but i think that covers the the big uh, beats this week i had to look at the clock i can't see i'm blind what do you want <laughs> so last night we got to spend some time with the legendary uh, denny o'neill you missed out because you I, I were doing work. the thing that you have to do I and work. don't get appreciated for oh, but we got to hang out have uh, iuk sponsored a lecture with the greatest Batman writer of all time to a fairly packed house. Oh good, I'm glad. With a surprisingly mixed age range. I really expected to see a bunch of guys my age and older mm -hmm. and the amount of like freshmen at IUK and sophomores I would say getting selfies with Denny O'Neill or having their buddies take photos what, there was a line. As you went from, say, the parking lot into wherever it was the thing was, were there a lot of posters up, or did you see anything? I saw nothing. Okay, wow. Now, they did some radio advertising okay. on the air. They did flyers and stuff like that. 
Uh, but I didn't see anything that, like that. And then we were maybe a couple minutes late. Well, that was Because you had to walk from the lot to mm -hmm. the thing. And, and he walks really slow. Then he's 75 years right. old. And as I said, six weeks ago, just had a quadruple bypass. And That's it's still. I, I told him he was the first. He was, you know, just trying to collect the whole set. So, <laughs> but uh, so we, you know, we walked him over there with him and his lovely wife. And were greeted really, really well. There was a lot of love in the room. He didn't get his coat off before people were like up to shake his hand and like ripping out comics and graphic novels. So the reception became not a reception. It became an impromptu signing uh -huh. where he sat down and goes, well, I didn't bring a pin. And it was like a Chuck Norris kind of movie with weapons coming out from everywhere with Sharpies. Uh -huh. Like everybody in the audience is like, we brought one. And so he's like, all right. He goes, you, uh, you supply the ammunition, and I'll uh, I'll get going. Also, yeah. in the audience, I want to note there were a lot of females. It wasn't. Oh yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't just, just fanboys. There was a lot of females. The la last day, latest stat I heard for conventions nationwide is forty percent female uh, for um, wow, and that's a lot. And I think I think that's growth. a great thing. Yeah. You know, for mm -hmm. what used to be basically totally a male dominated, oh, mm -hmm. it's so even now. Such a yeah. sausage fest. Wow. Can you say that? Sure, you just did. Um, tell me about oh. how, how long how long was the whole night. Well, it was supposed to be a 30-minute reception, uh -huh. which turned into about a 30, 40-minute signing, right. handshaking, picture taking. It was pretty taking. close. It started about the right time. So and was he up on a stage then? No, he. What they did was they had was it in classroom? the East Building, oh, okay. and it had the staggered, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. seating, very like reclining mm -hmm. chairs. We were very, very comfortable. Mm -hmm. And he was down in the pit as a professor. And it turns out that um, he yeah. spends a couple of days. A month as like an adjunct or whatever you call it. He's okay. a he's a professor <laughs> cool. for certain things over in New York. So he's used a commanding room like yeah. that and is able to. He talked for an hour. He or didn't talk for an hour. He was supposed, he was to, talk supposed to talk forty five minutes, uh -huh. and he went on a hour and forty five minutes, almost nice. two hours. Good for him. And uh, the entire time he gave us a history from the beginning of comics to mm -hmm. the, from the eighteen late eighteen hundreds mm -hmm. all the way to uh, he just recently was invited to go see the latest Batman movie when it aired and a couple others. Was it uh, filmed for the school or did we film it or? No, we didn't have anybody there filming it, but there was a couple of photographers and, and not like, one was definitely not some amateur photographer. Right. She was there for a good hour, every location you could be in cool. and I was hearing flashes. So I'm somebody like, like was taking some really good photos of well, good. it. That's, that's awesome. So, but, Rather, been very enlightening, mm -hmm. uh, great talk. He, some of the key points besides just giving a, a beautiful history of comics and how mm -hmm. Batman influenced, he was an executive editor at DC Comics. This was the main editor for Batman comics mm -hmm. for 15 or 20 years. He's the guy that I believe edited The Dark Knight Returns right up to the breaking of Batman's back, mm -hmm. Azrael, uh, Jason Todd's death. He was involved in all of this material, which mm -hmm. is really kind of a, a re-golden age of Batman. And somebody in that position freely says that uh, Bill Finger mm -hmm. created Batman. So he's the one that created the origin. There's been, Bob Kane is the gentleman who is credited for creating Batman. Right. His name is over everything. You right. can't open a Batman comic and not see created by Bob Kane. Right. Well, here's a guy who is in the know. Right. And he is saying, yes, Bob Kane created Batman. Bill Finger created Batman right. and and held him both in the same position. If nothing else, he, he was pretty clear that I guess Bill after, Finger was a little more involved. I guess late in years, even Bob Kane started to back off a little bit by saying and saying that Finger does deserve half the credit. Now, half the credit, I don't know half or whole, but sure. he, he, he did it later in, in, in his life uh, start to retract that a little bit. Um, there's a big there's a big movement to have finger credited. It, with it, it deserves to be. I mean, I've, this is something that you know it's news to other people, but comic geeks have known it. It's it's not a huge thing out there, right? But for those of us who are really in the know, right. something we've known about for years. Right. That and Bob is just he's not a really Bob Kane was not a very well liked guy right. in the industry. If you knew him, almost everybody I talked to, and he created Gotham helpful. or named Gotham and created the Joker and um, build it, build it, yes, yeah. build it. He came up with the origin. Bill right. Finger is the guy who. Who killed Batman's parents? Right. Mike? What? They're dead! <laughs> How'd that go? Oh, but that's dude, dude, so it's okay. <laughs> that's his job. So, but it, it was amazing. And then uh, he also went on about uh, Jason Todd. Uh -huh. He explained 
a little bit about the death of Jason Todd and how that came about. Uh, he went into did depth. Did he mention that 800 number thing? Did it, yeah. That, was that, 56 was, was votes. that legit? According to him, it was a difference of 56 votes. That was, wow. at, that was at dinner. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. There was a private dinner afterwards that okay. some of us got to go to. He, he spoke for almost two hours. He forgot his notes at home. Oh, wow. He didn't tell people that. He just went on. Right. He started a little Well, shaky. when you live it, I guess you could probably remember He said, this it. is the first time I've ever done this and uh -huh. forgot him. Beautifully. Good. Answered the questions. People... Oh. He, he would have answered questions all night. It was great. From the man, it is Raish Al Ghul. Raish. Raish. And R -A -Y. his daughter. From his daughter. Who's a, he created the guy. Uh -huh. His daughter's one that had to confirm it because she is a something at UCLA uh -huh. uh, language person. So I, I, think, I think it was that he created the character, uh -huh. but they had the name. They had the name they wanted to use. Okay. Okay. And he didn't know what the name was. I got you. And they asked daughter, and she said it's Rachel Gould. It, Rachel Gould. To be accurate and whatnot, it's mm -hmm. Rachel Gould. That is a big question you've so, wanted to answer for many, many years. It is. I'm happy for you. And then he, kind of he gave us a lot on Frank Miller. Yeah. Talked quite a bit about him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, it was just it was an amazing experience for a comic fan sure. to be in the presence of one of the few living, living legends, legends yeah. master storytellers, the guy who's changed the field of comics as we know it. Stan and, Lee would have charged about $10,000 for that appearance. Oh, more and those autographs, mm -hmm. That's hundred bucks a pop. That's true. And, so. and the, the dinner afterwards, it was it was so nice and once in a lifetime. Yeah, and him and his wife were just she's so sweet. It's great. It's funny because she's like informing him of stuff. Right. You know that current guy writing Batman, Scott Snyder, honey. All right. Scott Snyder. Uh -huh. and it was just great. It was that and, was a lot of fun. And he said that he does not read the stuff now. Uh -huh. DC sends him a box every month. Just giant FedEx package. She says filled. And with she everything. takes it because she's still a teacher. Mm -hmm. And she takes it and gives it to the kids if they win a spelling, they get an A on their spelling test cool. or whatever. That's cool. But she, and she reads it all to make sure that it's safe oh. for the kids. Oh, that's cool. So she, she knows what's She going had like on. a Batman pendant on. Mm -hmm. She was like a little fangirl. She, she was like knows, a little seven-year-old fangirl. Bread is buttered, and, a, like. and apparently she's a big fan of Adam West. Turns out that back in the day mm -hmm. she was involved in certain other things mm -hmm. and has met Adam West, and uh, he's dreamy. Oh. I think she said sexy. Sexy. Well, she said sexy. But it's yeah. okay because Denny shared with us that Kelly Hu is. Uh, she is. She's dreamy. Yes, she is. And so they, we now know who's on each other's list. <laughs> Turns out that. And that's what he called it. Is their yeah. list. Their list. That's it's nice. The greatest so, thing ever. That is awesome. That is nice. So what's going? On? Um. That, so that was our experience. We had a great time. Okay. But movie history time now. DC has announced like a huge roster. I mean, right. I honestly. We're not prepared, I think, to go into the, all the details. Right. There's a ton of movies that they just put out. None of them seem to be related whatsoever to the TV universe. No, they've come complete break. In that announcement, and I don't know why they didn't do it at New York Comic Con, but in that announcement, they said uh, in, uh, unequivocally that it is not going to be connected in any way to the TV thing. And I've, I got to believe that it's. Well, I don't know why. I'll say it. there's no there's no real reason. There's no real reason. Other than they, they because DC Comics is allergic to money. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't figure it out. I don't know if it's if it's a contractual thing or if it's a, uh, you know, they're only part owners of, C, of the CW and uh, man, I don't know. But it's not going to make sense. Yeah, they've already they've already cast the Flash for the movies. Uh, this guy named Ezra something who I don't know uh, in a movie that I didn't see. So, but a young, good looking kid apparently. And uh, which, and this is what this is what I just find to be kind of baffling. Right. You just started the TV series. You couldn't have cast this guy. I mean, you really couldn't have found a guy to do both. I understand Arrow came out. You know, this is season three. Right. Yeah. And quite frankly, Amel wants to do it. He's got an amazing online presence. I don't know that he shouldn't be the guy. Right. But regardless of that, I can see. You know, he's not the guy we chose for this. We don't want to use him, right. which is too bad. But with the Flash, you got to think they had that idea that they were going to do a Flash movie a year or so ago. But you include the Flash in the mo in the movie universe. That means the Arrow is part of that universe too. Only if they because, connect. They chose to connect him. I'm right. saying though, they've known long enough. Right. They didn't have to connect him. They could have done a lot of things. Yeah. And they have. This is the route they've chose. Now maybe in two years on uh, Geek Storm 384. Whew. I know. Uh, maybe we're like sitting here eating humble pie, and like yeah, DC figured it out. They'll make mo They'll make money, okay. And but uh, but my my worry is, and we talked about this just very briefly before we started. The glut of of movies that are coming out in the next five years uh, from both Marvel and DC and Star Wars and the Harry Potter movies. Uh, might, Jurassic Park. 
might uh, start to water them down and make people desensitized to you know these big summer blockbusters. People are going to go see them. They will make money, but will they make the money that will inspire the studios to keep making bigger and better movies instead of just cashing a check? Well, I mean, I, I, honestly, we're not going to know yet until we see how it is. But when I see DC puts out Man of Steel, right. the most iconic character that they have. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably Batman, but they will say right. it's Superman. Most of the world would say it's Superman. Right. Superman just got beat by Guardians of the Galaxy for box office. Right. The, the C-list losers, the, the bad news bearers of Marvel, just beat your most iconic character of all time. Right. If the C-list losers can do it, what happens now? I mean, that's... Vote of confidence, not so much for me. Yeah, and that's why they're that's why they're trying to cash in so much on the Justice League. They're, they've uh, announced they're going to split Justice League into one and two, and uh, then they announced all the solo movies: the Wonder Woman, um, Flash, Flash, Green Lantern, Green Lantern at the very end in 2020, Which, I think, uh, or with another recast, Cyborg in 2020, but Green Lantern maybe 19. Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad, which they're already talking about casting rumors on that. So they must be. It's supposed to come out in 16. Okay, and that's a group movie that they haven't actually signed anybody yet for. All right, so we're going to do all these movies, right. all these characters. Why would you not say that is the last movie? Why know. would you not put cool villains into each of these movies yeah. that, like the Joker, right. that well, Joker wouldn't work in Suicide Squad, but you get the idea. Right. Iconic characters that we can't get enough of. Yeah. Then the last movie, after you've introduced them all, Suicide Squad. Yeah. That's what makes sense. That is how Marvel would have done it, and Marvel would have made a fortune. The DC's like, now they should do it first. No, DC does that. But they do it in the animated world. It's great. And the Joker was in the, in, uh, to, in Suicide, the Squad Suicide Squad. Movie. And, and they do an movie. amazing job Absolutely. on those videos. Those videos make pennies right. compared to the, a major right. you know, blockbuster yeah. at the theater. So it just tells me that I think they're doing everything ass backwards. Right. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. To we can talk about more next week because I want to also get into it more detail and talk about the Marvel stuff and, and with the cap at uh, Iron, Man, Iron Man being in Cap 3 and. Uh, Civil War. Uh, Civil War and Rumors all that stuff. of female Robin. Yeah, that's still out there. They, they've, they've signed that girl, um, but we don't, know the we don't know if it's Robin or like a Batgirl. Um, well, we gotta, we got to finish up. What do you want to finish up on? What do you got? That's it. Last tad bit, tidbit. Uh, I don't know. That's it. Uh, that's there's, it. there's some talk about maybe rebooting, restarting Spider-Man again and trying to fold him into the Marvel Universe, Universe with this whole Civil War thing. We'll get into that. So uh, sharing it. Later. All right, everybody, that's Geek Storm for the week. Now remember, send in all the likes, get us some pictures, some memes. Just we'll get pictures up of Mike for you to make your own <laughs> special meme. And the winner of uh, next week's meme. meme, go to KokomoCon. Next week's meme will get uh, something special. We'll, we'll make it happen. <sighs> Next week will be a, a big KokomoCon uh, uh, special recap. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll have our regular show. But we'll, we'll throw in a lot of other stuff. About We're gonna Kokomo have Con. like a costume contest highlights. Oh yeah, we'll put throw some uh, pictures so, up there of the winners and everything. I think it should be video. That'd be awesome. I think, dude, dude. Yeah. Is there gonna be video? I was told dude, dude was gonna be there, producer dude. A lot of dudes in here. All right, Wonder Woman producer uh, April will uh, be doing it. Thank you, April. You're better than dude, dude. Dude, dude. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. I'm Sean. It's Mike. Austin. And uh, we're out.